Hello everyone and welcome to the first SOLIDWORKS video. Uh, in this video we're going to uh, start our uh, construction of the pizza cutter. Uh, so when you open SOLIDWORKS up, uh, this is kind of the menu you're going to see, something similar to this. You might get a kind of welcome screen if this is your first time opening SOLIDWORKS. Uh, but we're going to work in SOLIDWORKS today uh, to create the first piece of our pizza cutter. So if I go down here, uh, overall, this is what we're going to be building. We're going to be building a pizza cutter that consists of a number of parts. Uh, we're going to be putting them together in an assembly to create this overall piece, and we're going to be creating some drawings uh, of the pieces. Uh, so there are parts, assemblies, and drawings that we're going to be working with. We're always going to be starting with the parts before we go uh, anywhere else. Uh, so specifically within the pizza cutter, we're going to be first creating this guard part. Uh, the guard's a pretty simple part. It's just kind of a uh, like a pill shape uh, with like a rectangular hole in it. It's, it's flat. It's going to be pretty simple. Uh, and overall dimension-wise, this is what our guard part's going to look like. Uh, so here's the overall shape. Uh, like I said, it's kind of a pill shape with a flat rectangular hole. Uh, and these dimensions here are all given in millimeters. So we've got uh, our pill shape is 70 millimeters. It's got a 15 millimeter radius and a circular piece on either side. And then our hole is 15 by 4, and it's kind of centered in the whole thing. Um, so jumping back to SOLIDWORKS, uh, we're going to first create a new part. So go ahead, hit New. Uh, and you're always going to be given the menu uh, asking if you want a part, an assembly, or a drawing. Uh, and parts are where we're going to start for most of this. Once we have a bunch of parts, we can put them together into an assembly. Uh, also, we can create drawings from parts, but we always are going to create parts first. So go ahead, select part, and hit OK. And it should go ahead and open up. All right, and you should get kind of a menu over here and a menu along the top. Uh, and this is our standard SOLIDWORKS screen. We're always going to have a menu on the top and a menu over here. Uh, and this is going to let us select different pieces of our part. Right now we don't have much over there. Uh, just kind of the, the uh, default front plane, top plane, and right plane to work in. Uh, but as we start building stuff, you're going to see stuff start appearing over on this side. Uh, and then up on top are all the tools that we can use to draw, uh, edit features, etc. So with SOLIDWORKS, uh, when we're working in parts, we're mostly going to be working with sketches and features over here. Uh, these other pieces we're not going to be getting to in our uh, kind of basic introduction to SOLIDWORKS. So the way SOLIDWORKS works is we're always going to start with a sketch and then we're going to create features from that sketch. So let's go ahead and create a sketch. Um, so you start that by hitting the sketch button and it'll open up, well it'll first ask you to select a plane to sketch on. So if you have existing uh, part in there you can uh, select any one surface of the uh, piece but without that you just got to select one of those front, top, or right planes uh, and it should automatically kind of zoom uh, into that. All right, so for the pill shape, I'm going to do that by creating a line. Oh, before I do that, uh, one of the things you always want to check is you want to make sure your units match up with what you want. Because uh, if you switch the units mid-build, it's going to uh, assume you want to convert all those over. So we just want to start with millimeters, grams, seconds. Make sure that whenever you start a part, you switch to uh, that millimeter setting for that. Um, and so actually with that we got to go restart the sketch. We're going to go select the top plane again. All right, so now we're back in sketch mode. We're going to create a line. And I always, I always like starting at the origin point. So I'm going to start with a line. Uh, and I'm going to hit escape to kind of not add any, any more lines for the second. Uh, next I'm going to do the tangent arc. And so the tangent arc is going to uh, kind of follow the straight line and be tangent to that. So I'm going to go up and around at uh, about 180 degrees. Hit escape. I want to go back to the line. So I draw a line from there to there. Hit escape. Go back to my tangent arc and close the loop. So go back there to there. All right. So once we have that in, we're going to hit escape. Um, there's two ways. Once we get the basic shape in there, there's two ways we kind of define the shape fully. So we're going to use the dimensions with the smart dimension tool up here, or we're going to use the relations, which are these things here. 
So let's start with dimensions. Um, so I want this to be uh, 70 millimeters. So if I jump, jump back over to this, I can see that line from kind of, you know, the end of the arc to the other end of the arc is uh, 70 millimeters. So if I do smart dimension, I just click on this line, drag it down, I can type in 70 and it will modify that. If you want to go back and re-modify a dimension, I can just double click on any one dimension, modify it. I can make this 60 if I prefer that uh, and so on. So let's change it back to 70. All right, so that's 70 and the other thing, so I click on smart dimension again. Um, and this radius I know was 15 for my drawing. Uh, and those drawings are all available on Canvas. So type in 15. All right, and that's basically my shape. Um, so the way I built this, a lot of these relationships were built in um, prior to me putting the part in there. And that's, SolidWorks is pretty intuitive with some of those, uh, but I'll show you how to modify some of those relations before we go too much further. Um, so say that I didn't get this tangent like I wanted to. So some of these are pretty simple. If you hover over any one of these relations, you'll get a little pop-up. And so it's saying this line is horizontal. Well, we want it to be horizontal. This line down here is horizontal. Now, so these are single feature relations. Uh, and it's just those two are basically horizontal or vertical. Um, I also have some other relations. So here, this first point, uh, I put coincident, which means they're on top of uh, the origin. And so I started in the origin and it relations everything based on that. Um, and the other ones, these are tangents. And so actually there's two pieces, this line and this arc are highlighted in that kind of magenta color there. And so if I click on this and I actually delete it, you'll notice that this piece turns blue over here. And so if it's blue, it's not fully defined, which means you might have a mistake. And if I click on this, actually, I can kind of drag it around and see what's going on. Um, and I can see that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be a nice smooth transition one piece to the next. So if I want to add relationships in uh, that aren't added by default, I simply would hover over the line, hover over the arc. So hold down the control key uh, to select that other one and you can add relations. You're gonna have the relations over here and just hit tangent and it'll add that right back in there. Um, so sometimes you want to add relations uh, like we just showed. Sometimes you wanna delete relations. If you accidentally add one, uh, it can really make it difficult to uh, modify the design uh, in the way you want. So we can always add or delete relations. To delete one, you just click on it and then hit the delete key and it'll get rid of that relationship. All right, so we've got our first piece. I also want to talk at this point, um, actually let's go ahead and extrude. So we're going to exit the sketch. We're going to jump over to features, make sure you've got that sketch still selected and we're going to do extrude. So an extrude is the simplest way we go from a sketch to a 3D shape. It's basically saying take that sketch and give that shape some thickness. So if we hit extrude, uh, it'll modify the view and right now the default depth to this is 10 millimeters. We can see in our uh, drawing though it's only 2 millimeters thick so we've got to modify that and make it 2 millimeters and that looks like our cutout. So if I hit OK it'll give that some thickness. Alright and at this point I would also like to talk about uh, how to zoom in, kind of rotate things so you can look at them. Uh, so if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, the scroll wheel itself, if you rotate that back and forth, it'll let you uh, kind of zoom in and zoom out on your part. And if you hover over one area, it'll zoom in on that area. So that's an easy way to kind of navigate around is use the scroll wheel and pay attention to where your mouse is. Another way to change the orientation is if you hold down the scroll wheel and kind of drag it, it lets you free rotate an object. And so that is an easy way to kind of rotate around, see where you are. Uh, a more precise way to rotate an object is with 
this view or orientation piece up here. So if I click on this, it'll bring up a square, and so I can go over one of these parts, and this top one will give me a top view, and if I go to the front view, and so on. Um, I can also go down, this is always going to be your top view, this is always going to be your front view, right, so left, right, back, bottom, etc. So we can look at it from any one of kind of the orthogonal directions that way. So let's go back to the top view. All right, so that's the basics of kind of navigating around. Um, again, to change position, you just use the zoom, zoom in and out of different pieces, and get good at that. And then to change orientation, you can either use the scroll wheel or I usually use one of these view orientations. All right, so we still have to create this rectangular hole uh, in the centerpiece for my guard. So it's 15 by four, and it's basically a rectangular hole. It's centered uh, with these dimensions, and it goes all the way through the part. So let's go back to SolidWorks, and we're gonna go back and create another sketch. So if I hit Sketch this time, it'll ask me to select a plane. And since I already have a part in there, I'm just gonna select the front surface of my piece. And we just need to add a rectangle. So I'm gonna go up to the rectangle tool, drag in a rectangle like so. You can see there's some horizontal and vertical relations uh, for each of those pieces. Uh, let's go to smart dimension. So I know it's gonna be 15 millimeters wide by four millimeters tall. All right, and then to center it, I'm going off this origin point. So I go here to here I know that was supposed to be 27.5 millimeters. And I know from here down to this line here, that's supposed to be 13 millimeters. All right, and now all the lines are black. I can't drag this around or anything. Um, it's fully defined, so I'm gonna go ahead, exit the sketch, go back over to features, and now rather than extrude, I'm gonna do an extruded cut, which is gonna use that drawing to cut through the rest of the piece. All right, so I do extruded cut, make sure you had the, the sketch selected. Uh, if not, you'll have to manually select that. Um, and it's kinda of hard to see what's going on, so let's rotate a little bit. Uh, all right, and it's cutting down through the part. So it's going to a depth of two millimeters. Uh, you can either adjust that depth, or you can do like a through all um, up to next, some of these other ones. So through all, we'll just cut through everything. That's an easy way to create a hole that you make sure it goes all the way through. So let's go ahead, hit OK. All right, and now it looks like we've got our part. Um, that looks like our drawing over here. Uh, so we're all done with this one. Let's go ahead, and you can kind of see, you know, I do want to pause uh, and talk about this. So if you want to modify the sketches, you just have to go in, right click, and you're going to, well, if you just double click on that, it'll open back up the sketch. You can modify those dimensions, etc. cetera. Um, exit sketch to kind of regenerate everything. But those sketches are contained within the original extrude and the cut extrude over there. All right, so back to business. We're gonna go ahead and save. And if it's your first time saving the part, uh, it will ask you where you want to save. So go ahead, you know, my documents, whatever. Uh, I'm going to save it as the guard part. You'll notice I've already got one in there. I'm just going to save over it. Uh, it's because I did a practice round for this. So replace file, yes. All right, and then once it's saved, you're all set. So I will see you all in the next video.